The theories just keep on rolling in. This is part two to our season two, episode eight happiness comment video. We're just going to keep it going. We're having so much fun with these crazy theories. And I think I enjoy this more than just doing a review because I, I just fun to go through this. And it's easier for me to like answer back this way than like typing too. I'm like, I'd rather edit a 30 minute video <laughs> than, than, than try to. But anyways, this is, John, I'm super excited. Let's go. Hey everyone, so welcome back to As I With Nick and John. Like Nick said, we're continuing in our part two of comments from the season finale of season two of Raised by Wolves. Hey guys, so we've been definitely uh, enjoying and having the conversation continue with the comments. So just a quick thing. So we're, we want to keep you guys around. We want to continue this conversation into other shows. So check out the two polls we have posted. One is about your favorite streaming services. So we know where we should try and draw the shows we cover it from. And then also we have a more immediate future one on what we should jump to next and cover. And this is things that are already streaming that are going on right now. So check those out. Feel free to put down alternates as well so we can know what you guys are interested in and make sure to cover those things. Because we, like Nick was saying, our favorite part of all this has been the comments and the community interaction. It's been super fun. With that, well, let's jump on into more of this. All right, so we have Fred that says, did we just get confirmation that Soul is good and the entity is good and actually they escaped to Earth to re-evolve and for some reason, somewhat absolutely confused, <laughs> I like somewhat absolutely confused and guess it'll be two years for any answers. Speculation and theories commence. Also, WTF happened to that compartment that got pulled into the water early in the season? Random or payoff waiting for later season? Yeah, so you had that huge container that yeah. just got pulled into the ocean. And when we saw the mermen thing for the first time, I thought, oh, that's what pulled it in. But they aren't no. big enough, I think, <laughs> no to have way. done that. So, you know how many yeah. of them would have to flop on just to pull it up? Like, it's not yeah, they're like, hi-ho, and just like, hi-ho. You know, they, yeah. they just pull it in. So, yeah, so we haven't really gotten that yet. But as far as we know, that's the only thing that lives in the acid water right now. Mm -hmm. And you imagine it wouldn't be something that's too crazy dangerous because grandmother wouldn't have devolved the humans into living in there yeah. if that was the case. So, yeah, I'm really curious what's going to come of that, if anything. I mean, that's that's been a while now, but I'll be curious to see what happens to that. And, of course... Hopefully we don't have to wait two years to get more of this, but since <laughs> in, like know. in the last video was mentioned, season three has been confirmed yet and they probably aren't going to get greenlit with funding to really make things happen and underway until you have that funding. So yeah, I mean, the longer it takes to get confirmed and greenlit, the longer it's going to take until we get to watch this. So it's going to be very interesting. But as far as is soul good and is the entity good i'm still completely i mean not sure probably about any according of that to stuff. their programming or their motives right it's like everyone yeah. everyone thinks they're doing the right thing at this point i don't think like grandmother's doing it to be like oh i want to de-evolve them you know it's like part of the program it's like that's the best route to keeping them alive you know kind of thing yeah so. <clears throat> and then i mean the only true antagonist that we had some point or another was Marcus. You know, he had killed mm. Paul's real parents. You know, Sue and uh, Sue and Marcus had killed the real parents, and they seemed bad for a while. But man, they've had you know they're they're my favorite characters in the show yeah. so far, and they're very much like everybody else. It's just they're doing what they think is right for mm. you know what they need to be doing. So and they were just trying to survive. They were just trying to get off of Earth and survive as well. So it's again, it's that that kind of not black and white. I think the Jedi, it's not yeah. that thing. It's oh, like, okay, man, don't you go know, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's the whole range of morality, which I think is really, really fun. And how do androids deal with morality and what happens to, you know, as they evolve mm. their own morality, like how do they deal with that? Which is obviously what's been happening with mother and father, which has been really fun. Yes. <laughs> Daryl Cole had straight to the point. This episode pissed me off. <laughs> That's it. I can yeah. I, I can understand that depending on like if you were just looking for more answers and not questions and yeah because there's everyone's different when it comes to what they like and all that stuff and I, I mean I can kind of see too <laughs> if if you were wanting like just simple answers and instead you just constantly get more questions I can see why this episode would piss you yeah. off yeah like one hundred percent I could agree I'd not agree but I can understand your your yeah. where, where where you're coming from. 
you know, the big thing for me is this just felt like this didn't feel like a season finale. This felt like another episode. Like, okay, right? we'll be back next week. It, yeah. it didn't feel like a season finale for me, at least with the last episode of season one. They went through the planet core. They went through the lava thing and then they came out the other side and they're on the other side of the planet now in mm-hmm. the, in the, you know, the, the temperate zone or whatever. I was like, oh, that was, they're going to be in a whole other place yeah. next season. Whereas this is like, we'll see you next week. Just kidding. We'll see you in two years. You know, that's. <laughs> So yeah, I can Daryl, I can completely understand like, why you'd be. Do you think it would have been a better cliffhanger? I don't I don't want to say like, but like if it ended with like Sue turning into the tree and like the serpent, like or something yeah, like that. I like that would that, be like, what yeah. the you know, what I mean like what's going on with the tree of knowledge or whatever. So that probably would have been because that was some major plot point beats. But yeah. then again, I kind of like wouldn't have been trapped though. Yes, we wouldn't have had any information on grandmother at that point, yeah. like, you know, as far as like what her whole overall point is. So it, a lot of the season wouldn't have yeah. made any sense at that point. So they it needed to end <laughs> the way it was. Doesn't make sense now. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I mean, I'm perfectly happy with the season. I think it's been a wonderful season of entertainment. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, can I enjoyed it more I, than season one. Way more. Yes. Way, I enjoyed this way more than season one. All right. So Jim Reaper. Marcus, who had ingested necromancer dark fo- photons at the end, was shot and then nailed to a tree made from ha- uh, a half necromancer, half entity biosynthetic serpent made from mother that previously ate the original Mary slash Sue tree that acted as an antenna slash connection to the entity and evolved said serpent. Maybe Marcus, by some fluke, is mixed with the necromancer dark photons and become the literal god that kid who traded for the game carved. I mean, damn, in any other show, this would sound weird, but Raised by Wolves is just just a day that ends in one. <laughs> yeah. So another comment that I had read that was talking about Nick and I's conversation, I had said something like, yeah, you know, I mean, you know, Marcus was nailed to the tree. There was the snake that used to be the tree that was Sue. He's like, he's like, if you guys just listen to yourself talk, you guys sound absolutely crazy. And But reading that yeah. sentence that he just, like, I followed it, but I was like, man, if I hadn't just watched this whole season, I would think we were absolutely bat just crazy. You know, it's, it's, we might it's be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, but yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's very, there's a lot going on there for sure. And it's, it's like trying to wrap our head around, like if you try to follow the, the bloodline or, or what's happening here, it's like, there's a lot of movie pieces where technically he could be a, a melting pot of tons of different info now and maybe that's why he's upside down he, he doesn't know how to con- con- control his his uh his his gimbal like his balance you know <laughs> oh you're back i'd actually impressed <laughs> i'd actually impressed the mute button in my pocket <laughs> no you're good you're good, it was good. But, but yeah i mean it, it definitely is very convoluted and, and that, that happens with hardcore science fiction is as mm-hmm. the series and as the episodes go on they get more and more complex. And all the, mm-hmm. the hard part is, is like once season three hits, unless you've already invested into season one and two, the casual person's probably not going to jump into this yeah. show unless they're willing to, you know, go from the beginning. Mm-hmm. And you could say that about any sequel to any movie. You're not going to jump yeah. into Return of the Jedi without having watched, you know, A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back. But this <laughs> especially is very, very, you know, there's a lot of moving parts here, but yeah, I mean, to, to go back to what Jim was saying, it's like, yeah, you know what? There's all kinds of stuff mixed in there. And clearly Lucius was probably forced into, you know, led to believe that what he was doing was going to be for his you know, benefit, but he was it, staying it, outside of the, the, the tropical area too. Is remember how like mother had a fly to go talk to him about the whole card thing or, or, or not, not, not the card, but he was, she was like looking for yeah, uh, yeah. Marcus and stuff like that. She like flew out there. She, she like, had a fly kind of far so he was just probably like yes the voice mm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> but um and by the way that whole thing when mother flew way up there into space mm. with the serpent i'm like why haven't you just been checking out the whole planet the whole the whole sh- show whole seasons like you yeah. you think you'd have a better better handle on stuff but anyway which was a beautiful shot too yeah it was beautiful shots but she's she just goes for joy rides, you know, <laughs> casually going around like whatever. I mean, she, right, anyway, she she did go for joy joy rides in season one where she went to her pods. <laughs> <laughs> Different type of joy ride. <laughs> that was the little rider bouncing up and down for that stuff. All right, anyway, all right. So, let's see. So, um, but yeah, you know what? It's 
that's my biggest thing I'm looking forward to seeing. Even more than mother and grandmother is seeing what's going to happen with Marcus. Like Marcus is my favorite character along. Stu was my favorite character. I'm assuming we're not mm. going to see a you whole lot know. of her anymore. <laughs> you never know. Serpent came back to life. He pulled the Monty Python. I'm not dead yet. I'm yeah. getting better. So you know, maybe he turned if you back into a tree. tree. Maybe she comes out of the tree. <laughs> we went from snake back to tree. We can go tree back to, Sue. you know what? <laughs> I mean, you know, hey, you, you never know. All right, let's see. So, uh, Kimar7779. And by the way, I think you've been a regular on the uh, channel for this whole season. So, thank you. I really think Grandmother snatched Vita's relic because the fruit from the tree of life is the antidote to devolving. Yes, someone would probably have to sacrifice themselves to grow it, but I think Grandmother showed them the process to scare them out of making that sacrifice. I think camping would be the one to do it. So, Nick, you have any thoughts on this one? Well, yeah, I, I, it's kind of like what you were touching on, too. Like, you know how grand, Grandmother is like, give me that. You know, like, no, you yeah. can't have the tool to defeat my ultimate plan of de-evolving you guys. So, <laughs> I mean, it, it, you totally can see that happening with the vibes. And you can also maybe even see Campion, the man of faith almost, right? Or no, is he? Is he like the man of faith? I just feel like he's the most open with anything like you know everything has souls this is that so i feel like if anything he would be willing to believe or do an action or maybe him and him and paul would do like a a buddy a buddy cop thing where they're like going off and <laughs> solving the mystery together you know or maybe they're gonna run away and by running away they realize this or who knows they can go many different <laughs> directions from this point but i like that i just like that idea a lot like the idea of like the seeds are the answers but we don't know if it is another seed because there was an eyeball on it. So it could be a different function, maybe like, you know, the tree is one. Maybe the eyes is another thing. And yeah, it's confusing. I know. <laughs> I mean, so it was interesting. So grandmother wanted everybody, including her, to see that video. Yeah. So they would be too scared to touch anything like that. Whether all of those pods are going to be the same thing is not. So. Whether this one's going to involve so a sacrifice like that though. or not could be different. Because, because like also confusing. Because, but well, the the song the song is what activated it to open it. So it's Mithraic, right? And if if the technocrats is Mithraic, you would I don't know. See, like it's so confusing because you would think those are Mithraic. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm so going in a loop here. Let's just go to the next comment. I'm gonna be here for but, hours. But it's, it's by the way, though, uh, Kamar. It's it's a very fun comment though, because it it's gonna be. I would imagine in the first episode or two of the next season is going to be one of the big plot points because yeah. I I don't think we're gonna be able to get very far in the story without that coming up very quickly. All right, let's see. So G L L N W V R Glyn Wither. All right, so. And this tech and this theology 101 course is a little too on the nose. Now there are medallions of mother. Oh, now there are medallions of mother, their savior and grandmother mind effing the colonist saying humans make up gods as their emotional support pet, proving that like glasses guy, humans are reprogrammable. Some will stubborn, stubbornly cling to mother and swear she was real. Others will doubt and say, then where is she now? Grandmother even starts calling her Lamia, downgrading her importance. Yeah, it's funny because uh, I hadn't heard uh, Mother's regular name for a long time, even though in the comments. No, yeah, no, been... it was mentioned in, in, in season one a couple times. But that's what I mean. Like, yeah. we haven't heard it for a long time, mm -hmm. yet Grandmother had been, you know, saying it for quite a while. But yeah, so it's, it's kind of fun. It's like that... trying to erase the memory of Mother. Yeah, I mean, or d downplay over time. Like, mm -hmm. hey, you have these really, and obviously in our own history, you have really important figures and over time, you kind of forget their importance, and it's kind of the same yeah, thing. Yeah, the here. victors, I mean, right? The victors, right? Yeah. History kind of thing. No, yeah, I think yeah. it was, and so, I really like that bottom half of the comment too. It just, yeah, I wasn't when he when I saw that when I was reading that, I was like, oh, that totally makes sense. The idea of like trying to remove mother from everyone's mind completely. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. So it's going to be really, really fun to see how that happens. And I mean, there was a lot of people wondering in the comments from last week's episodes, like, yeah, maybe, maybe grandmother's not bad. I mean, definitely in how she's yeah. dealing with m mother, she's bad and how she's going the whole devolving yeah. route is bad. But I mean, she doesn't think she's bad, but yeah, how, she, how it's, it's going to be. It's just tough else. though, right? Cause mother and father were like the first people we were introduced to in the, in the show. So we want to root for them. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we want to yeah. be team mom and dad, 
like crazy. We're like, yeah, mom and dad, mom and dad. So when any, whenever anyone kind of does something against them, you're kind of like, oh, I don't know. You know what I mean? Because we, we, this was like the first people, you know. But anyway. Next, well, next. my <laughs> my favorite uh, kind of overlord type character in this show so far has been the trust, right? The yeah. trust. Mm-hmm. The trust because that entity did have an overall view of things, but yeah. not to the to the kind of not quite devolving accurate human. i mean yeah devolving technically humans grandmother he kind of did that to paul with the yeah. with, with the snake bomb like he wasn't afraid to you know you know but, turn, turn someone into a snake <laughs> which i think makes sense though mm-hmm. if you have to sacrifice a few people in order to save thousands and thousands or whatever the number is yeah. like okay that makes better quantitative sense Whereas mother, her whole goal is I got to save these six kids yeah. no matter what. Like, well, that doesn't make sense. And so when she took out the trust, that actually was much to the detriment of everybody else. And mm. things haven't been as good for all that whole colony since then. So it's going to be interesting to see how things go. All right. So Broken TV Universe said, maybe the leeches can keep the evolution in check. The voice traded that piece of knowledge with Sue for her sacrifice to save Paul. I wonder if leeches will play a part in next season and doing the same thing. And what's coming that humans would need to escape to the sea anyway. Becoming prey or ha- unhospitable atmospheres seems to be the only reason for that type of de-evolution. Yeah, so unless they're going back to the whole thing of humans are just going to destroy each other no matter mm. what. Um, the winter makes it sound like that. And they did take the time for Paul to say, oh, it's so much warmer in the water. I wish I could just get in there now. I mean, that that made you think that was the reason, but... Yeah, I mean, it, it is kind of interesting that that's what they're making us seem to be the reason, but what else is there? Yeah, and I, I just kind of like the idea of the leeches, though, right? Because it's like he traded yeah. he traded something with Sue. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. hey, you know, I mean, if that can reverse within, it felt like hours or a day, you know, yeah. how yeah, quick that quickly. was, you yeah. know? So it's very interesting, like, oh, maybe this could be a, a balance to keep them human at some point, so. And I and I did find it very interesting, um, you know how how important the the leeches kind of continued to be. Like okay, mm. like you could see them being used for a lot of other things, yeah. and and now you're kind of seeing okay that that could be a way that they could come into play. And so, and then then people are drawing all kinds of parallels, it's like you know the serpent number seven looked very much like a leech and so mm. you know there was parallels there as well so it'll be very interesting to see if that comes up and maybe that stopped them from losing the last of their humanity mm-hmm. i mean th- are they in the ocean for a reason where the leeches happen to be you know and they just happen to be devolved humans and so anyway maybe there's something that's still there <laughs> a I'm lot of sure. unanswered questions <laughs> yes <laughs> just a few i right, see so phoenix chiron chiron I'm going to say Phoenix Chiron, like the, like the, of the river sticks. All Ooh. right, let's see. Is it possible that the entity when revealed will look like father? We don't know father's real past and that would be a mind. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It's far fetched, but wouldn't put it past the show. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the upside is anything goes in this world. Yep. Um, the downside is anything goes in this world. Yep. <laughs> At this point, we've almost been conditioned <laughs> yeah. to accept anything. I mean, if they, yeah. if they did look the same, it would be funny if one told, told the joke and the other one laughed, <laughs> but <laughs> 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 you're the funniest bro. Are you the funniest Android I've ever met? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me another one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Wait, wait, I think I know what you're going to say. And then, yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's going to be um, interesting. What grandfather, if we do get grandfather and there has been hints that there was a grandfather, you know, as far as you're my companion, aren't you? Yeah. It'd be interesting to see if that, you know, happens to come up and I'll be curious to see what that is. Um, you know what? If they, if they always had the veil on, they might not even know what the face looks like of grandfather. Uh, so to her, it's yeah. just like, it's just another and android to her you know if there was veils you know i mean i don't know if androids can see past the veil like you know digitally or whatever but i just I, it's very you interesting. know that that is very true because they asked her have you oh i think marcus asked her have you ever taken this veil off she said no never so yeah she wouldn't know what her companion looked like yeah. so that's very very true yeah so that isn't very and that's a very interesting point so maybe that other skull that you had referenced in the in mm. the episode you know conversation if it was an android in the way we're thinking about, maybe that was yeah. 
I mean, who knows? Father? But, all right. Grandfather? Father? Grandpapa? All right, so Fernando Salazar. I like how when it's revealed grandmother is devolving the children, camping is almost so sounding more stupider <laughs> yes! for a lack of a that, better term. That's what I was talking about in the last one. Like, I, that was one thing, like, remember with the camera thing, it just sounded so stupid. Like, oh, let's go into this acid water or look at yeah. my hand. It's changing. What is this? I think we're, you know, whatever. From, I was just like, what is going on here? He's been, like, so yeah. smart with, like, tracking and stuff like yeah. that. That's why I was yeah. like, is this... If she is she really seeing what she's seeing, you know what I mean? Like, is it is it twisted in a way just to activate her emotions so she would go into the little egg or rubber ball, you know, or something like that? But yeah, I I thought I thought that was really weird. But I my 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 own little guess on that is just that they were trying to condense so much information into totally such a could, relatively yeah. short amount of screen time that he's like, all right, let's. Get yeah. across the idea that they want to go on the water. They are. I wish I could just crawl evolving. into the water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you know, it's just kind of funny. But yeah, that that would have been nice if they could have spread out that information over a little bit longer of a period of time in the in the episode. But they already, as it was, they got to do what you got to do, stuff. right? Yeah. Gosh, when you're crunched with only eight episodes and all these all these questions you have to answer, you got you got to no, cram yeah. it in at yeah, times. Yeah. And all those new questions you have to ask the audience too. Gosh, all right, right, so Mr. Singh, let's go. Let's just, the granny and entity are working together, and the entity got rid of serpent as it does not want an intelligent weapon, because mother informed granny that the serpent was driven by emotions even after eating entity's tree. You know that's something I hadn't thought about in a while. The, this uh, comment's not over, but that's something I hadn't thought mm -hmm. about in a while. Is uh, grandmother did seem sincerely Ooh, uh, intrigued yeah. when. Oh, it's emotions. displaying emotions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The new seed box might give the powers of necromancer to whoever messes with it as the eyes are printed on the box. And now we might have human necromancers on both sides due to this. Entities being the Marcus and the other one might be whoever messes with the new box. Now, maybe entity would try to manipulate the mother into its own weapon and the sim. That's why I did not want the mother's eyes removed. It's going to be amazing to wait for into the next season. Yeah, it's the whole eye box yeah. is going to be a brand new element and we barely got two minutes of exposure to it. You know, mm. it was found, it was taken and that was it. So that's going to be, that's almost as, that's a new thing thrown in almost like the serpent, you know, being born from mother yep. at the end of the last season. It's like, we got it. It was there. I mean, we got more of the serpent, but it was, it's like, here it is. We're going to explain this later on, mm -hmm. you know, along with Marcus floating upside down <laughs> and bleeding on Lucian. I, <laughs> Gee, it's true. I, I, all right. Anyway. <laughs> all right. <laughs> what is this? It's not hoax, but H A O X U. When grandmother, t uh, when grandmother talking about the entity wants to destroy the world, she might be saying in terms of humanity wants to greedily expand and harvest all the resources and as a side effect, destroy the planet, not intentionally suicidal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it was yeah. more just at least based on other movies kind of touching on the same point. It's more about, you know, humans just either warring with each other or using up their natural resources to where they're going to destroy themselves. It's typically from a, th a thematic standpoint done in like humans just can't help themselves. Mm -hmm. And so the AI or whatever has to help them yeah. to where they can't hurt themselves. And I'm assuming that's where it's coming from, but uh, obviously I could be wrong too. <laughs> I like it. I like where you're yeah. going with it though. I do. Yeah. I do. <laughs> yeah. The film guy. The question is now that grandmother doesn't have her veil, will she start to regret her actions? And yeah, that's the big thing. I mean, she's at first I thought she was kind of lying that she didn't like the veil. So mother would want to put on the veil even more. Just kidding. Ah, you have the veil now. I thought it was going to be something like that. But if she really has never taken off the veil, it probably is very uncomfortable for her. But that doesn't mean she's not going to start to. It's like mother and father. She, they would have thought that the emotions they're displaying now would have been completely unwanted. But now you can see yeah. it. Mm -hmm. But especially with father, you can tell he's sincerely kind of enjoying the person that he is now and the relationships he kind of has. Mm more than mother, I think. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it's going to be very interesting to see what type of character she's going to grow into mm. and uh, what direction she could go into a more vile person or she should, she could grow yeah. into a more empathetic person. It's true. It doesn't mean she's going to change her stance, but she might care about the people that she's affecting more too. Mm -hmm. Because she's been 
viewing things from a more objective standpoint with the veil on. Yeah. And now she doesn't have that. Yeah. Now I'm curious. She's Nick, leading um, us on. She we, we know she knows so much more. Like even at the end, she's like, "You're just a child." <laughs> it's like, oh, so I'm man. curious. Curious with with you, Nick. Mother didn't want to give up the veil after she, even after she killed number seven. Yeah, because she was worried about the emotion she, which she was gonna have. Because remember how like her nose was like dripping, and we thought it was yeah. due to the just the idea that Sue like she had no idea Sue was gonna do yeah, all this right. Stress, and it's yeah. like she's like ah, she's like trying to deal with emotions. Like this is humans have to deal with this. Erg, you know. <laughs> it's like you know. Well, what I was curious about is, do you think grandmother would have taken back the veil if? mother would have wanted to take it off you know i i, I don't think um it would have changed her i mean it would have changed her plans because it, it would she would have to find another way to get mother to put the veil back on yeah. kind of thing yeah, but yeah. you know due to her calculations maybe she knew just by mother and the way she was like she would do this and it would end up this way kind of thing and hopefully we'll get answers to that in the next <laughs> season it just all up some you know just i'm just assuming right now which is, man we have a we have a celebrity among us paul atreides from dune woo! has joined our ranks spice. so paul Atre- spice. <laughs> spice. john we have to do this like if you just pose we'll read this as a as a monologue from the 1980s uh dune where it's just like a thought process in your head <laughs> All right, so season three, the kids gradually figure everything out and foil grandmother's plans. The final line for season three will be grandmother saying, and I would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for you meddling kids. <laughs> yeah. I then we'll have have no a, idea they had Scooby-Doo on Dune. <laughs> yeah, we'll, ha- we'll, have, we'll have a Scooby mer- merman. He's like, huh? Oh, Scooby snacks? Yeah. You know, seaweed? Scooby sea? Yeah. You know, we, we, mer- do, we do need a dog. I feel like we're missing yeah. a dog. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, it's, that's good. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, Paul, for honor. taking your time out of uh, you know the Emperor's throne room. Oh, uh, we you know, we room we room. love we love Dune on this channel too. We've we've yes. done some great Dune deep v- dives. Uh, Kyle, the well, expert. we've enjoyed it. You can decide if you think they're <laughs> excellent or not. That's, <laughs> well, that's up to you guys. Here. I'm not a reader, but John and Kyle are readers, and they, it was that's just it. fun. We were just breaking down a lot of the cool theory stuff. So we're Dune fans here for sure. <laughs> yes, we are Dune fans for sure. Yes. All right, let's see. <laughs> So Gillen Wiver again. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm up. Why are you not up live streaming yeah. this dude? So this was yeah. just something I sent to John. I just thought it was so much fun. Like, yeah, I, and like we, I know I mentioned it. Like, do you guys want us to do a live stream? I'm just going to say it here again. Like if you want us to do a live stream, maybe we can plan something in the future where we'll just try our best to answer comments and, you know, read stuff like that. We'll see. I want to know how interested you guys are. And then from there, we will figure out the back end to make it happen. Cause me and John yeah. are not in the same room while filming this, just in case yes. you guys didn't know that. Not We're in the same room, on the other the side of the country, states, <laughs> different time zones, which is interesting because we don't know where all of you are from in the world as yeah. well. And time zones and having you guys all tune in at the same time becomes a challenge as well, but something we could look into, but we definitely enjoy the edits and being able to be more refined when we present our work to you as well. All right, let's see. So, um, let's see. <laughs> Blazing Ocean. Camping will become the king of the fish, Aqua Boy. <laughs> <laughs> and he's going to walk around, oh, my name's Campion. <laughs> you know, just, Even the fish yeah. have souls. <laughs> All right, so Bill S. Unanswered questions. No one reviewing Raised by Wolves has pondered why all the Mithraic have mullets. By the way, in Lamia we trust. Yeah. Mullet time. Yeah, Mithra- the Mithraic mullets. You know, it's like get, to get in the club, you have to have a mullet. You know, yeah. it's just how it goes. Yeah. It's so funny. Their, their hairstyle, there's a show on HBO Max called Righteous Gem Gemstones. And it's about a preacher. Anyways, it, but... Well, the preacher has a best friend who's a no, the preacher's son has a best friend who used to be a Satanist, but he has the same type of mullet haircut. <laughs> Every time I see the mullet haircut, I just think of That's that awesome. character from Raised by or no Righteous Gem Gemstones. Oh, I'm really mixing up my shows now. Oh, let's just go to the next one. <laughs> All right, so we have Witch Azel Toasted. Mm-hmm. That's a good name. Witch Azel Toasted. It's like a Zazel Toasted, yeah. but Witch Azel Toasted. All right. So Marcus will be the false prophet meant to be, in a sense, the son of the one below soul or devil soul. Mm. But the true prophet is Campion, the son of the one above Lamia. Marcus is the half dark photon being now through death, but Campion is the dark photon being through birth. 
yeah, so again, we're kind of assuming that we're going to have these two different, well, we have two different entities, mm. two different voices, and they're conflicting. And, you know, the, the biggest thing, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Nick, and those of you in the comments, but I guess the biggest thing we have kind of going along that path is that we've, like, we get things like Paul, you know, hey, the voice telling Paul to burn the cards. And then we have other, you know, other voices, you know, revealing or mm -hmm. lighting Marcus, uh, guiding Marcus to the cards. And it seems like we have the voice telling contradictory things at times. And so is that mainly why we think there's two different voices or two different sides going on? Or Yeah, that that's my crazy, wacky thought. <laughs> but um, mm -hmm. it's so funny. When he was reading the, the false prophet thing, I... I'm no expert and it's been forever since I read the book of revelations, but in, in revelations, there's like a whole thing when it talks about like Mary, um, the virgin is going off with the child. And then there's like a dragon following her. And then there's like the false prophet and with the false prophet comes beasts. And with the, yeah. like all the different, I obviously I'm totally butchering this thing. I, I, I know I'm, I don't have it open. I just was thinking about, it, but I'm just like thinking of all this and I wonder because they're tying in so many different things, right? Even like being nailed to a tree and like the whole pose and the poses we get. So, but yeah, it's, it, there's a lot to unpack just with that ending alone. And I kind of like the idea of the false prophet though, because, you know, he wanted to be the prophet so bad and he wanted to be the <laughs> prophet so bad. It's like, are you nobody? <laughs> <laughs> right after he got done saying, I don't want to be the prophet. Now he's floating upside down, change bleeding on Lucius change saying, I didn't want it. Like with his crazy eyes, I didn't want to be the prophet and great. Now I am. Uh, I'm going to bleed on Lucius. You did this to me. I'm going to bleed on you. Uh. <laughs> All right. So Willie Evans Jr. says, this is what, I came specifically to hear Nick yell that he was right about grandmother. My thumb is hovering over the subscribe button. I'm holding my subscription hostage based on how much he wilds out. <laughs> I'm kidding, but yeah, good call. Fun reviews, new subscriber, thumbs up. Also giving us Necrohuman in the final seconds was borderline cruel. I need a Necro Scarface t-shirt. Yeah, he's, it, it was, you gotta have a crazy cliffhanger, I guess, for people to be talking about to come in next season, but it's like, give us a little bit more than that. I, I don't know. <laughs> I knew it was going to happen based on how season one ended, but I'm like, dang it. That's even worse than the cliffhanger from season one. That's okay, so funny. Anyway. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for coming back. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. All right. Let's should, see. Should I just say I was right? <laughs> yeah, no. All right. Let's see. So, um, this is and this is one, the last right? one. Yeah. yeah. Antonio, Antonio Nicastro. This show is what this is when we talking about. This show is wild. Just hearing the crazy sentences you guys say cracks me up. Without context, people would think you guys are insane. And this is a quote. Yeah. <laughs> the snake that ate the tree that used to be Sue is now Marcus. <laughs> that made me laugh aloud so hard because I think that was something I said. And it was even more entertaining reading the quote that someone doubt, that, you know, put down that I said, the snake that ate the tree that used to be Sue is now Marcus. That's like that, that yeah. very, very yeah, possible yeah, theory, John. Yeah, it's just I think hilarious, that's a very yeah. level headed comment. <laughs> We're not oh, cuckoo awesome. here at all for Coco Puffs. Oh, <laughs> <Nah. laughs> well, you guys, so this is fun. part part two oh, of our so comments, good, yeah. but this is only after a day of comments. So please keep the conversation oh, yes. going in these comment threads for this video or in the other ones we're going to try and continue to in fact i would say probably keep the comments going in these videos because we'll mm. try and co and monitor these newer ones so we know this we'll is do our best are coming out. <laughs> yeah we'll do our best but you know the the cool thing is, is even though the season is over there's plenty of conversation to be had on the show and we'd love yeah. to continue the conversation and obviously as far as next shows please check out those polls let us know what you'd like us to cover next in the immediate future Check out the slightly older poll as far as what streaming services you, you usually would uh, usually have and you would like us to check out and try and draw from mm -hmm. and let us know, you know, other alternates as well. Thank you so much for joining us on this season of Raised by Wolves. Nick and I definitely enjoyed the season, but having the conversation is what really made it fun and just hearing some of the theories you guys have and then seeing them become what really was the case has been, you know, a super thrill. And just seeing you guys come back 
episode after episode has been, you know, yes. wonderful and lovely. And, you know, so we're, we're really thankful to have all you guys. So please, uh, you know, let us know down below what else you're thinking about. It's going to be coming in season three. We're definitely excited. Hopefully it's not going to be too long of a wait. If you hear anything about season three getting greenlit, please let us know. I'll please. be excited about that. Thank you very much for watching. Check out asart.space for all the audio and video links for all the different content we have. And we'll see you on the next Azart. Shh. Crazy. Crazy. <laughs>